Hi, this is Rick. Today we're going to do something which is probably one of the more difficult things I've ever done and that is uh, we're going to create a dog that parachutes down attached to a player. When he hits the ground the dog and the player will search for enemies nearby and if they find an enemy then the dog will track the enemy and kill the enemy and then come back and patrol with the player. So to do this I've just simply created a demo mission. Here's an officer that I've dropped down and there is an independent rifleman who will have a 30% or she's she going to make a 20% chance of him running away. One is full courage, zero is full cowardice. So 0 0.2 gives him about a 20% chance of running away. I'll put a marker down on the map so that when I parachute in I'm going to be able to check the map and see roughly where I need to land and where the enemy position would be. Uh, I've created a static C-130 in the air and a player. Um, what I think I'm also going to do quickly is I'm just going to cut the lawn here because um, just to make it a little bit easier to see to see the enemy. Right. Okay, so I'm going to play it as that player and then I'm going to load up the dog and transfer to the plane. I made some triggers, so I'm just going to use these to trigger the three processes. First, attach the dog. Now, the default dog animations are very limited. And so the animation that I'm using here is actually a dead dog animation. The reason for that is that the dog is the dog's body is slightly curved, so I can wrap it around the player, which is more realistic. Um, I put a front a backpack on the front of the player to act as a harness. And uh, if you look at the front legs of the dog, they do glitch a bit, but there's nothing you can really do about that. So based on the photographs I've seen of dogs being doing para jumping then this looks reasonably realistic all right so we're gonna contact soldier we're gonna transfer to the plane Took quite a while to position the dog and attach attach positions so that he didn't um, so it doesn't glitches it glitches the least amount. Very difficult to not have some glitching because obviously the collision of the dog uh, it, there is no control over the collision of the dog uh, at this point. So there is our player with the dog attached. So now we're going to jump. slung underneath the player, the dog has to change orientation. In this instance, he's tilted slightly back, but mostly down, because his, his weight is transferring down, but he's also strapped to the player, so the curvature of the dog's body kind of looks reasonably realistic. He's still got his um, backpack that looks like a, a harness holding him in position. I left it a little bit late. You can see when he opens his parachute, the dog position is pretty good. It's basically strapped around the, the player. And, um, and I'm using this parachute, by the way, because this is uh, 
This is iron front three. Uh, so it's a different kind of parachute, but a normal parachute, steer, steerable parachute would work better because it, you would be able to see the parachute attached to his hands. So the dog, in this case, you can see it's leaning back into his lap as he, as he comes down. Um, reasonably realistic. And the enemy, hopefully, is still running around somewhere over there. Although I can't see him. So I hope he hasn't run away, because that's going to be... It's going to limit my capabilities. Okay, so the dog is now released. And the dog hasn't sensed anyone around here. But he's looking around. The enemy should theoretically be around this place. Hmm. See the dog is following me. And I have some basic control over him. I can say go there and point at the map just like a normal soldier. Whether or not he will completely obey me is another thing. There he is. There's the enemy. When the dog sees him, you'll start barking. Fortunately, this guy seems to be pretty keen on running away. Dog still hasn't seen him. Yeah, dog's picked him up. I can increase the dog's detection. No, the dog's going to try and attack him. Can't see the dog at this point. Oh, he's coming around. Okay, so he killed him. Took him a bit of a a long time to find the guy but he eventually found him and now the dog regroups with me the tricky part as well is that there is no real proper attack uh, animation which is a serious problem so Two, to try left. and create an, a realistic dog attack at best is difficult But the good news is that he stays with me and uh, hopefully he will, if he picks up scent of someone else, he will continue the loop so he will then attack that person. So actually that's what happens. Uh, as I said, it's extremely difficult to do what you've just seen. Um, there's only like a couple of guys that, that have like, I've seen that have got a, a really, really, or have done it really well. One guy was J-Boy. Um, that was uh, an amazing piece of coding, was my, in my opinion. But anyway, this is a simple sort of a lightweight version. Um, this this one allows you, as I said, to parachute in with the dog, which is kind of nice. So I'll show you how that was done. Okay, so obviously this little bit over here was just purely for demonstration purposes. The enemy could be anywhere in a, in a in a town or wherever. Best thing for dog dogs, uh, simply because of the collision process, it's probably depending on whether you're using a crate unit or crate agent. It's probably better to do it in the out, outdoor area where there's um, less chances of, of him colliding with buildings and so on. Um, okay, so just very simply on the the way the triggers worked, I. Uh, I just this was just simply to call these different functions so the first um, radio alpha radio trigger just called the script paradog which basically adds a dog to the player 
and attaches it to the do to the player. Adds the backpack and so on. I'll show you the script now. The second uh, trigger transferred to the plane. Basically, it attaches the player to the C-130B, which is the plane uh, at X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z offsets. Um, and then it sets the player standing up and it detaches the player from the, from the plane. And the third trigger opens the doors. This is Radio Charlie. Plays a, a little sound, ramp open, bit of wind, and then it animates the two doors, the, the top top ramp and the bottom ramp. And then there's another trigger which is a which is set to true, and that just runs a loop for the C130 engine. Alright. So now we get into the paradog script. All right, so it picks up the handler from this select zero. It then creates a, a group. And then creates the patrol dog. Using Alsatian sand black F. So I personally like it the most. It creates it at the position handler. It then joins the patrol dog to this group gives the patrol dog a set identity. In this case, I'm going to call him K9Max so that at the bottom of the screen when you're in the game, you can see his actual name. And the way that's done is to, in your description.ext file, you put a class CFG identities. This is purely a text file, so you can go and physically just type this in. It's very easy to make. You just create a text file and make sure you get rid of the text extension and just put in a .ext on the end. And then just put these uh, these types of classes in, like sound, and uh, in this case the identity name K9 Max. So that's the name that will be seen in the in the game. Uh, don't have to worry about the face in this case because it's a dog. No glasses. It doesn't really matter what the speaker is, as long as you put something in. And then in this case, in the in the script, I declare that patrol dog will be called K9 Max, and then. Um, I set the variable freefall to false uh, and then it checks to see if handler is the leader of the group and if it is then it joins the patrol dog to the group handler um, and it does it silently so there's no radio command saying talking to the dog saying join my group if the handler is not the leader of the group handler then uh, the patrol dog will just follow the handler which gives obviously the handler less control. Um, the dog will sort of just basically do its own thing, but it will continue to follow the handler when it's completed its kill cycle. Then it disables the animation on the patrol dog and switches off damage on the patrol dog. So uh, it allows it to, in case there's some collision or maybe in the landing process, uh, at least then the dog could potentially survive. It then remote execs a switch move because switch moves is local. So everyone will see the dog in the same animation state and the animation is called dog die. Uh, it took a while to dig that animation up. So in this case, uh, patrol dog, switch move, dog die. It remote execs that, meaning it sends it to all of the machines on the network. The reason for that is that switch move is actually a local, has local effect. Uh, which means that if you don't remote exec it, the switch move uh, will not be seen by everyone on the network. Then it creates a dummy backpack. Um, in this case, the B field pack car key is the brown backpack that you saw struck on the chest of the player. And the reason I use that is because it looks kind of like a sling. It then creates a, a, a ground weapon holder. This is like um, if you were to drop a weapon on the floor, essentially it's using a ground weapon holder. It then adds to the global backpack cargo space. It adds a backpack, this backpack. It then saves the uh, inventory into the mission namespace uh, variable called virtual inventory. It removes the existing backpack of the handler and puts a parachute on. So in this little bit, what we've done is we've created a, a dummy backpack 
Uh, we've saved the guy's inventory and we've removed his backpack and then we've put a parachute on him. Now we look at the attachment points. Now in the, in the case where the, the unit is standing up, the dummy backpack is attached to, in this case, vehicle handler at these X, Y and Z offsets from the pelvis. That's a mem point, a memory point. The reason I use the pelvis as opposed to, say, the neck is because when the head moves, um, the attach point would then move away from the body of the player. And so you could get some weird effects, whereas the pelvis seems to be the most static point. So use the pelvis as the primary access point. Um, you, you can't stop glitching. It's going to happen a bit. But I think the soft experimenting a bit, that's probably the best attach point. Next, I set the vector direction and up so that the dummy backpack is attached to the front and is facing upwards and the patrol dog is attached to the vehicle handler again it's also attached to the front more or less in line with the dummy backpack and then the dog's rotated so that he's facing side on to the player so uh, that's your direction and that's your up then I'm not going to even try and explain this because it's uh, it's a bit of a mind-bending process. But anyway, the the easiest method I've found to set direction and up is to switch on the debug console and to give the object a global variable or a global name and then experiment. And then you'll get the hang of this quite quickly and it's quite easy. Then you can copy it straight out of the debug console into your script. Okay, so then the next question is what happens when the player is in Halo freefall state? So the script waits until the animation state for the handler is Halo freefall. When the animation state for handler is in the freefall state where his arms and his legs are extended, then it sets freefall to true. And so it uses this little variable to ensure that this process doesn't happen prior to that. And then again, it changes the orientation of the uh, the backpack, and it changes the orientation and attach points for the dog. Okay. Then the next thing is when the chute is opened, wait until animation state handler para pilot. Now, in this sense, the para pilot is a is an animation of the player or the unit with his arms extended above his head, holding on to the guy ropes of the parachute. So wait until it gets into that animation state and then adjust again, adjust the attach points, and the vector direction and up for the backpack and for the patrol dog. Then we need to wait until is touching ground handler and free fall. So we know that free fall has happened now. And again, this is important because otherwise this process would have would have possibly taken place right in the beginning before we transferred to the plan because he's standing on the ground so this condition would have actually been true except for this so we use that free fall uh, to ensure that these events don't take place when the player is touching the ground it detaches the patrol dog it enables the animation for the dog because remember he's in a switch move death pose strapped to the player at the moment so he's detached his, his animation is switched back on. He's switched move out of that death state and put into an immediate play move. Now play move is has a, a global effect, so we don't need to remote exec it. It pauses for a fifth of a second, uh, switches the damage back on on the dog because now he's on the ground. And then he makes sure, makes sure the dog is standing up. It deletes the dummy backpack off the unit and loads the virtual inventory that we saved earlier with the in the mission namespace using virtual inventory uh, variable. And then it goes on patrol. So when he's on the ground and the dog is alive, do the following loop. And this loop is essentially relatively short, believe it or not. I've written three different attempts at this and one sort of ended up in, in hundreds of lines and that wasn't including the parachuting process. So this is a fairly kind of stripped down basic version but it kind of works as you saw okay so the nearest uh, so the nearest bad guy because we're now looking for enemies is object now so the it clears the if there were previously if bad guy was previously known basically says then he's not known anymore 
patrol dog do watch handler so the patrol dog is told to watch the handler and there's a small pause and then basically it looks for nearest enemies to the handler at position handler and puts that into into a variable called nearest bad guy so if isn't if not is null nearest bad guy in other words there is a bad guy then it looks at the distance between the position of the patrol dog and the nearest bad guy it gets that distance and then it puts the dog into sprint because if the enemy starts running away the dog run speed is too slow for the patrol dog to catch him and then basically it runs a sequence of a few if statements and it's all determined on the distance that's being calculated between the patrol dog and the nearest bad guy so if the distance between 80 and 100 the dog barks and the patrol dog kind of looks towards the bad guy if the distance is between 60 and 80 the dog barks a different type of bark also remote exec say 3d because we need everyone to hear this and this is localized to the dog's position so anyone on the player's side or and not necessarily just the player's side you might be the guy being attacked by the dog um, you'll hear the dog bark and you'll get some sense of distance and attenuation the patrol dog then is told to to move which is a slightly more powerful command than uh, move to which is the most basic command which would be used in the event that the dog was created with create uh, never remember agent so if you use create agent uh, the, the control of the dog is much more limited in my opinion anyway patrol dog not that you have a great con deal of control even with create unit but uh, slightly more okay so patrol dog do move to the position of the nearest bad guy and you notice that the dog kind of tends to take the a looping sort of um, attack vector it doesn't go directly at the at the unit i think there's probably ways i could force the dog to go in a more direct line of sight process but for the sake of this uh, sometimes it actually looks more realistic where it looks like the dog is attempting to sort of outflank the unit the distance between the dog and the nearest bad guy is between 40 and 60 barks a third time that these bark sounds are progressively more agitated and aggressive then patrol dog do move carries on moving and then if the distance is between uh, 5 and 40 keeps moving goes quiet when the distance between the dog and the nearest bad guy is less than five then the patrol dog makes a, a very loud noise dog attack which is a 3d sound the patrol dog moves to the nearest bad guy because we want to close that five five meter distance it looks at the bad guy to make sure the dog is facing the bad guy and then it passes these variables to a parrot dog attack script so it pulls these three variables out that you'll pass to the script and it pulls them out by this select zero meaning the first the first uh, element that's being passed and the second element because it's zero based handler so nearest bad guy and handler and patrol dog are pulled from the script because by now the dog is within five meters or probably even less three meters of the nearest bad guy if the bad guy is, is alive then the patrol dog plays dog idle bark and the dog idle bark has a, is a certain animation where the head kind of looks like he's biting uh, it stops the dog and then it plays this kind of animation where the the bad guy looks like he's falling and that remote execs that switch move because again that's a local command so i have to remote exec it so everyone sees the bad guy like sort of fall towards the ground it raises the bad guy slightly off the ground and stops him the patrol dog then is attached to the bad guy uh, at a slight y offset meaning he's slightly backed off his mouth is kind of almost on the bad guy i don't want it, his head to sort of protrude through and collide with the bad guy then the direction of the bad guy 
is set to the direction of the patrol dog minus 180. In other words, he's swung round, so the head is closest to the dog. There's a, a brief sleep for this to take place. In this case, the dog says this, but the actual um, bad guy is actually screaming. So you hear the sound of a dog attacking and a scream at the same time. Then we have a very short sleep or delay. Nearest bad guy then puts his hands up as if he's being has hurt his head. They all happen so quickly that you barely get to see them. Pushes the guy back up into the air slightly. Detaches the patrol dog. Otherwise, you wouldn't see this process happening. It loops five times during a random period of between half a second and one second. And it gives the bad guy damage of 0.19. The reason it's 0.19 is because I want to keep him alive so that I can play one last little animation on him. And I also need a little bit of a delay while the dog attacks him and, and looks as though he's hurting him. Then the nearest bad guy direction is, is reset to the same direction as was before in case there was any rotational process because this is really iffy stuff. Uh, it's not 100%, you won't get the same uh, effect every single time. The next thing is nearest bad guy and it plays this animation where he kind of, now that he's previously had his hands up and he's kind of like in the air and the dog's like pushed him back, he now falls to the ground, he's on the ground and he rolls over to his back. Again, that's a remote exec switch move. And then make sure that he's touching the ground for a half a second delay and then kills him. At that point, uh, the animation will kind of probably terminate somewhere in between him lying in the previous animation state and him getting completely uh, rolling completely to his back. So this half second will actually truncate the the playback of this animation. So even though this is a switch move, we've got some kind of weird delay effect happening here. If we set this delay longer, then he ends up lying on his back. And it doesn't kind of look quite as good as this. This here, he ends up lying, lying on his side, as you saw. And then once this script is finished, the patrol dog then is told to continue following the handler. We go back to the pat patrol dog or para dog. So this is complete now. In the event that there was no bad guy found, in other words, is now nearest bad guy within the search radius, then then basically does this, and it tells him to play move dog run and follow the handler. And then it sleeps for five seconds. And this loop, this while loop, is just continu just continually runs with a long delay, and it will continue no matter how long it takes. He will follow the player until he detects uh, the nearest nearest enemy, and then he will play this loop back again and come back into this. So that's how the process works. As I said, it was extremely difficult to do, but I think it kind of works. And uh, let me know what you think. And if you have ways of improving it, I'm sure there are some really good scripters out there who can do a better job than I can. So if you find any clever ways of improving this, please let me know. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe if you haven't. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. See you next time. <laughs>